When you replace judgment with curiosity, everything changes. Robin Conley Downs. Hi, I'm Melinda Van Fleet, and welcome to the Good Karma Success Coach Podcast. I'm a success coach, speaker, and business consultant, and my husband Ryan and I were laid off at the same time 10 years ago. We moved to the Florida Keys without jobs, not knowing anyone, hardly any money, and we'd never even been here. But we made it, and now we're living our best lives. And all along on our journey, I've said that someday when we get our quote unquote shit together, we will help others. And since then, we've both done a lot of self-work and built successful businesses. So that day is here, and one of my ways of paying it forward is through this podcast. Each week, my intent is to be relatable and bring you tactical tips, tools, share my learnings and stories that can help inspire or transform you wherever you are in your career or general life and make an impact. I strongly believe that if I can do it, you can do it too. So what's stopping you? Before we get started with this week's podcast, I want to announce that I'm super excited to be reopening my private one-on-one coaching. If you have big dreams and want to live your best life, you don't need to do it alone. Whether you need help shifting your mindset or just taking action, my private one-on-one coaching will help you start living the life you know you're meant to live. So you can contact me through my email, melinda at melindavanfleet.com, and I'll also put it in the show notes. Let's get started on living your best life. Now onto the podcast. Thanks for listening. Judgment is a topic that's been heavy on my heart for a very long time. It's such a human condition that we all judge. And I never really knew or really understood anything about it till I was in my 40s. Yeah, really sad, isn't it? Really, really sad. I was raised by a very judgmental mother. I'm just going to put it out there. And it was part of our life to really talk, even dissect everything from our neighbors to coworkers to bosses, family members, friends, TV shows, anything. It was what we most talked about in conversation pretty much when I think about it. 90, 70, 80% of the time on occasion. And I really thought it was normal behavior to sit around and judge. Again, really, really sad. I doubt I'm alone. That's the big thing. I really doubt it. And I've worked so hard to correct this behavior. But the problem is sometimes you get tricked up in thinking, Is it judgment or is it an opinion? And opinions, you need to be able to form ideas and make decisions, move forward in something or not move forward in something. But in that I'm not alone, I'm probably part of a group of people, maybe similar in age to myself, awakening from this pattern. And I'm so thankful for that. I have to tell you that it's less stressful to have really worked on being less judgmental. And I feel more at ease and I feel more in alignment with my soul, which I should be. That's how we all should be. It was actually very stressful on my heart and in my soul when I think back about it, when I'd sit around talking about people. I mean, who am I? Why was I doing that? Like I said, it's just, I was brought up thinking it was normal. But occasionally, once in a while, I do hindsight myself that I did it again. Oh my gosh. And again, I don't think I'm alone. I think we all do this from time to time. Even the best of us, even the best people that are always working on self-development and living our best lives and being our best selves, I think it probably still happens from time to time. And we need to forgive ourselves and have grace with it. But I wanted to tell this kind of funny tongue in cheek, I guess you could say story that pokes fun at myself and was a really good lesson because I always have lessons. I always hindsight myself. I always learn. I always try to do better. And this was just really recent and happened the other day. (laughs) And it's in regards to, um, you've probably all heard of her, Billie Eilish. If you don't know who she is, You might be one of the few, I'll be real honest, but definitely Google her. She is super popular right now, 
And she is definitely not a one hit wonder. We all know what one hit wonders are, you know, these pop stars or any type of singer. It comes along once, they have a great song, and then you really never hear from them again. I imagine the music industry is extremely challenging and my heart goes out to those people. But I don't believe that Billie Eilish is a one hit wonder. So my two nieces who I love and adore, ages 13 and 11, they love her. And this has been going on. This isn't like new. Like I said, I don't think Billie Eilish is going to be a one hit wonder. And my nieces have definitely been fans of her for now over a year for sure. And even my older niece saw her in concert. But I have to tell you, when I first heard of her and my nieces showed me this video of her with spiders all over her face, I was like, who is this crazy girl? Who is this crazy girl dressed in baggy clothes with spiders all over her face and she's singing and her song's depressing. I can't believe my cute little nieces who are fun and full of energy are liking this strange girl. There you go. That was my judgment. And when I sit here, I think about it. I I sounded probably like my great grandmother. I remember growing up on New Year's Eve and going to my great grandmother's condo She would babysit myself and my brother and my sister, and we'd watch Dick Clark's Rock and Eve, and she would make fun of all, you know, the performers that were popular that day. Boy George. Boy George was one of them. She was, like, making fun of him, and when I sit back and I think about it, it's like, oh, my God, I actually had a crush on Boy George. Yes, that's extremely odd. I know, when you think about it. I had a crush on Boy George. So here, who am I to judge this popular singer, Billie Eilish. Shame on me. And what triggered this podcast and me thinking through my Billie Eilish initial reaction, which again was full of judgment, was that when I was watching the SNL Eddie Murphy clips uh, a couple days ago, I was in a little bit of a funk. I'd heard some bummer news. So I started watching the Eddie Murphy clips. I put it in one of my Instagram posts and he was cracking me up. He's hilarious. Even if you don't agree with his humor, you just have to give him props for fine-tuning his craft and being who he is. Um, He's just amazing. Again, I'm dating myself. I'm definitely a child of the 80s. But after I was watching these Eddie Murphy clips, all of a sudden the next clip in my feed was James Corden's Carpool Karaoke with none other than Billy herself. And I ended up getting sucked in. 17 minutes. Yep, I sat there and watched the whole 17 minutes. And I have to tell you, I think I'm a fan. I think I'm, I could be one of her oldest fans, maybe. Maybe I'll even start my own fan club that's fans hitting almost 50. Hmm. But I have to say, she is funny, she's personable, she's interesting, and she's actually a really great singer and songwriter who happens to like spiders. And I have to also give props to the fact that she's very close to her family and lives at home in their house that they still have. So it's not like they all went out and bought big mansions and are parading around in fancy cars. They seem pretty down to earth and like hardworking people, which I love. Very cool. Check it out. So what was my lesson? My lesson is before I form an opinion, a judging one for that matter, you know what? Do some research. Take a moment after you recognize where your thoughts are headed and to look into something. You might actually learn something like I did. And this could go for anything. There's so much talk right now about plant-based medicines and people will probably have judgment around that and judgment around those people. I don't know much about it personally. I have not tried anything. But you know what? If I were going to have some judgment around it, do some research, listen to some podcasts. Heck, Google is your friend. You can find out anything, right? So that's just one example. There are so many examples out there. You could put political candidates in that bucket. I'm sure a lot of people will shake their heads at that. People have a lot of judgment without any research or factual backings in regards to their favorite political candidates or their non-favorite political candidates. And 
also it could be anything. It could be someone you're chatting with and their opinions that could cause you to make judgments about them and you don't know them and you don't know really what they're talking about in terms of being educated on the topic and here you are making judgment about them. One of my favorite phrases that I heard way back when, it's actually something Gabby Bernstein says, and it's see yourself as others. And I think I've mentioned it on a podcast before, but I think it's been a while. I just think it's really important to have that as a frame of reference when you are finding yourself starting to be judgmental. Take a moment to put yourself in the other person's shoes. It could go into thinking about empathy, which is a whole other podcast I could probably do, but I'll just keep it simple and not make this one super long, but try to see yourself as the other person before you maybe say something that you should probably maybe keep to yourself or use a different frame of reference for. So I hope this helps a little bit. I know this is a big topic. It's just one podcast. If you want to hear more about this topic and some other thoughts, especially, you know, just diving into the difference between judgment and opinion. And like I mentioned earlier, you know, sometimes you need to form an opinion in order to make a decision. So it's a little tricky and a little gray, or I should say probably pretty gray at this point in time. But if you are finding yourself to be someone who is judgy, the biggest thing is to first just to start to recognize it, just to start to recognize it and catch yourself. And just like with anything, practicing and taking action to change your behaviors over time works. I've read it takes 21 days to change a habit. I've read it takes 65 days to change a habit. Personally, I think it just takes three months. So I just keep it at the three months. Maybe some days are better than others and you remember to catch yourself more often or some days you're just so busy and you forget and don't think about catching yourself. So you kind of have to back up and work on practicing a little harder. Hence why I just like to say three months and keep it simple. So my closing thought is just to, again, catch yourself. When you find yourself judging someone else or judging a certain situation, something that you're not fully educated on, and maybe you should just be quiet about, I want you just to say in your head, kindness, kindness, when you are feeling this way, that you should be catching yourself and noticing that you are judging someone or something. Just remember kindness. And if you can also remember, see yourself as others, that helps too. That really does help. I really hope you found some value in this podcast. Like I said in the beginning, it's a pretty heavy topic, at least for me, based on my life and my childhood. I believe it really has affected a lot in my life, a lot with people, a lot with coworkers, a lot as a leader. And I plan on diving more into this topic and exploring it on my other podcast as well, Crush It in Sales, in terms of sales and leadership and personal development, which is what that podcast is about. So if you haven't checked that podcast out, feel free to do that. I would love to hear from you. Please follow me on Instagram or LinkedIn to let me know what your thoughts are. Any ideas? I would love to hear what your thoughts are, anything that you want to talk about more. And I'm more than happy to include your thoughts as well. I love to hear from other people. I learn from other people. So that's always the fun part. I love that at my meetup when everyone else shares, it's not just me talking. I think that's great. I I tend to actually be someone who's more quiet. So it's actually kind of funny that I do this podcast to me personally. I like to actually ask more questions and hear about others than talk about myself. So This podcast to me is my way to share. I do enjoy doing it, but it's definitely something in regards to pushing through fear and getting out of my comfort zone each week. So again, please share with a friend or family member. I always mention that on every single podcast. And if you get a moment, rate and review on Apple, I would appreciate that as well. So till next time, be grateful, be curious, always be learning. And you know what? Have some fun too. Thank you for listening.